Welcome to Train Mountain, the world's largest hobby railroad. Over the past three decades, Train Mountain has evolved into an impressive railroad park with nearly 20 miles of mainline track, not including yards and sidings. Whether you are a live steam enthusiast or just enjoy a pleasant train ride through the woods, we guarantee that you won't find an experience like this anywhere else. To ensure the railroad is safe and enjoyable for everyone, Train Mountain has a specific set of operating rules that apply at all times. During a triennial, additional rules go into effect and we will cover them in the video. And now, here are the rules of the road. Operating Safety this video covers the fundamentals of safe operation. For a discussion in greater depth, feel free to consult the Train Mountain Encyclopedia and other online documents available at trainmountain.org. To maintain a safe environment for all members and guests, please observe the following safety rules of the road. All trains must have both an engineer and a conductor. The only exception to this rule is for speeders and similar single unit equipment that can be safely removed from the track by one person in the event of a breakdown. Engineers and their conductors must be able to clearly and quickly communicate while underway by voice commands, radio, or whistles. Mileposts form the basis for several operating rules. These important signs are located every two one hundredths of a mile, or 106 feet, along the mainline track. There is a lot of useful information on these signs. Let's take a look at one. The name of the track division is listed at the top of the sign. In the middle is the track mileage number. Although this number is not continuous around the track, it is a unique number and is not repeated. If you need to call for help, please give out your location using this number and the division name. The grade of the track from this milepost to the next milepost is listed at the bottom of the sign. While underway, a separation of 210 feet or two milepost lengths must be maintained in between trains. This is mandatory. The safety rule that probably prevents more accidents than all others at Train Mountain is the one that protects the back of your train in the event of a derailment or breakdown. The conductor must properly flag two milepost lengths or 210 feet behind any stopped train. If the conductor is needed to help the engineer of the train, he or she must either get a passenger to do the flagging or flag until the next train arrives. Then the conductor for the arriving train can then protect the back of both trains while the conductor for the first train assists the engineer. The maximum running speed on the track is seven miles per hour. At that speed, the timing is 10 seconds between mileposts. Of course, track conditions may require lesser speeds for safe operation. When operating within yard limits, the speed limit is 3 miles per hour. Sound all horns or whistles at all W signs. Two longs, one short while approaching, and one long while in the crossing. It should sound like this. Every train must carry a green block in case of a derailment. If a derailment occurs, place the green block on the right side at the derailment location. Not only does this tell track crews where the problems are, it warns the next train that there may be an issue with the track.
After entering and stopping at any siding, you must realign the switch you used to enter the siding back to the main line. This rule does not apply if the switch is of the manual remote control type. When running at night, a white headlight must be mounted on the front of the engine and a red flashing taillight must be mounted on the rear of the last car. Track signal lights. All trains must observe and obey all track signal lights. Most of the track at Train Mountain is unidirectional, but there are a few sections of bi-directional track which are protected with overhead or trackside signals. Never proceed through a steady red light. The electrical contacts for the signals are located on the tracks just below or adjacent to the lights. Be sure not to cross this point while waiting for a green signal. This poor engineer will never get a green light because the front of her engine is already in the next block. Track signal lights are also encountered at the electrical switch locations and the long tunnel below the back shop yard. Required safety equipment. All conductors must be equipped with a red flag, a whistle, and a flashlight if running at night. Minimum flag size is 12 inches by 12 inches. All trains must have an FRS radio. A cell phone is required when operating north of the highway. Radio frequencies and cell phone numbers that are used during meets may be posted on the bulletin board in the Hall of Flags. The back of your badge lists telephone contact numbers. All trains using couplers must be equipped with safety chains or cables. Chains must have welded links and connectors must have screw-type closures. Rope and clip links are not accepted. Some grades at Train Mountain are more than a mile long, and use of safety chains and cables have prevented runaway cars. All steam trains must have a Train Mountain Boiler Inspection Certificate and be fired by propane only. Fire Safety The fire danger in Klamath County is frequently high and often extreme. Smoking is never allowed outside of three designated areas. They are outside the east door of the Hall of Flags, in front of the back shop, and outside the motor pool. If you have any questions, please ask a volunteer. Smoking is prohibited in all other areas of the Train Mountain property. This includes the entire northern portion. Violators may be asked to leave. Other state and federal entities may ask that you carry firefighting equipment aboard your train. Current information will be made available. Train Mountain Switches You will encounter several types of track switches while operating at Train Mountain. Remote electrical switches are located at Grand Junction and the entrance to Central Station. As you approach, you will see a stand by the side of the track with push buttons. Stop by the stand and press the button for your desired route. Wait at the stand and observe the overhead signal. Proceed only when you get the required flashing red, yellow, or green light. Do not move until you receive your proceed signal and do not tailgate a previous train. If you do, you may find that the switches change under you. During heavy traffic times, you may be asked to choose your desired route at Central Station by contacting a volunteer by radio. 
A trackside sign will alert you when you must call for routing and the radio channel to be used. At other times, just follow the same trackside push button procedure as described previously. Another type of switch you will encounter at Train Mountain is the manual remote switch. As you approach this type of switch, you will see a stand with a yellow or green ball on the top, with a yellow handle just below. If you see a green ball, it means that the switch is aligned for the main line. If the ball is yellow, it is lined for an alternate route or siding. The switch stand operates points of the switch that are 40 feet beyond the stand. When you stop at one of these stands, if you move the yellow handle to the right, you will turn right at the switch. Conversely, if you turn the handle to the left, you will go to the left. There is one place on the track that is a little bit confusing to newcomers. There are two of these manual remote stands located close together just outside of the tunnel as you are leaving Douglas Loop. The first stand operates a switch that has an alternate route of dog walk. The second stand operates a switch that has the alternate route of South Portal Circle. The main line here is straight through and up the outside loop known as Rabbit Run. The other types of switches you will find at Train Mountain are manual operators located at the points of the switch. The short arm wigwag switch operator is shown here. You operate these switches by moving the short arm that is located off to the side of the points. The points of these switches are held in position with a spring. When you move through this type of switch in a direction from frog to points, the points will spring to allow the wheel flanges to pass. If you back up with one of these switches under your train, there is a possibility that you could split the switch. We see here one of the kick switches you will find at Train Mountain. To change alignment at these switches, simply kick the point over to the desired side. Please do not use a hard kick to realign the points. All it takes is a slight nudge to move the points. When you travel through this type of switch in a direction from frog to points, the points will automatically snap over and realign to your direction of travel. There is no danger of splitting this type of switch when backing up. One final safety point when traveling around the track, it is your responsibility as train engineer to observe the alignment of all approaching switches. Failure to do so could result in an accident. There are many places around the track where an alternate route takes you across tracks with approaching traffic. If you are not alert, you could run right in front of an oncoming train. Here is a tip. When observing the alignment of manual remote switches, it is easier to see the handle alignment on the stand than the points on the switch that are 40 feet down the track. Remember, if the handle is to the right, you are aligned to go to the right. Vice versa, if the handle is to the left, you are aligned to go to the left. Train Mountain is our railroad, and it is only as safe as we make it. We are each responsible, and our behaviors do affect others, including our many guests. If you see something going on that looks unsafe, stop it. If you are too uncomfortable to intervene, communicate your observation immediately to an official. Meets are complicated events, and many tasks need attention to ensure a safe and fun experience for all. If all of us contributes just a few hours during the course of the event doing something we enjoy, we will be able to staff and complete all the needed tasks and activities. To find out what is needed, please check with the event office or attend the volunteer meetings. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to run your train and have fun. The Triennial During a triennial, there are additional procedures needed due to the high volume of rail activity. Changes and current safety advisories which will arise during the triennial will be posted at the triennial office in the Hall of Flags. Please check there before running your train. 
A large volume of necessary information is included in your registration packet. Please take the time to read it before heading out. Shortly after leaving the main station area, you will arrive at an inspection station staffed by volunteers. Their job is to check for the required safety items, including the FRS radio, flag, safety chains, and boiler certificate on steam engines. Only during a triennial, following your completion of the safety briefing, including this presentation, a volunteer will attach a sticker to your registration badge. The inspection staff will verify that both the engineer and the conductor have this sticker before allowing the train to proceed. This concludes the Train Mountain Safety and Orientation video. Please follow each safety rule carefully, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And again, thanks for volunteering. From all of us at Train Mountain, we hope you enjoy your stay and have fun on your train ride safely.